Good morning or evening, however you are viewing this presentation. I would like to welcome you to my presentation of Assessment 2 for Senior Years Learning and Teaching. At the beginning of this unit, I chose Physical Education for Assessment 2 as I believe this subject requires strenuous and engaging lesson plans. I must note that all the decisions made for these four exemplar lessons was based upon the Physical Education Senior Syllabus, as linked below. This presentation will follow an explicit structure as visible in this slide. Firstly, I will discuss the four exemplar lessons that focus on literacy and ICT strategies, pedagogical content knowledge, and higher order thinking questioning strategies. This includes discussing the lesson focus, objectives, links to the syllabi, and additionally a short recap of the lesson structure. The next portion of this presentation will include a short teaching demonstration. The teaching demonstration is taken from Lesson 1, Literacy Strategies, and is pulled from the introduction of the lesson. This will last about six minutes. After this demonstration, I'll discuss how feedback has guided and impacted the choices I made regarding my exemplar lessons. This includes showing feedback and showing the improvements made. Following this, I'll justify choices made for each exemplar lesson by utilizing scholarly sources that demonstrate my pedagogical content knowledge and knowledge of curriculum planning requirements. Please enjoy the next 30 minutes of my presentation, and I'm very much looking forward to any feedback I receive. Before I continue with this presentation, I will note where each exemplar lesson will exist during the two years of physical education. I must note that the selection of where these lessons exist was based on where I thought these lessons would be most successful. The first lesson will focus on literacy strategies and is placed in Unit 2, Sports Psychology, Equity and Physical Activity. For Unit 4, Energy, Fitness and Training and Physical Activity, I developed the ICT Strategy lesson. Pedagogical content knowledge will be explored during Unit 1, Motor Learning, Functional Anatomy, Biomechanics and Physical Activity. The last lesson, Higher Order Thinking Questioning Strategies, is placed during Unit 3, Tactical Awareness, Ethics and Integrity. The first lesson I will discuss is the Literacy Strategies lesson which as discussed above takes place during Unit 2 Sports Psychology, Equity and Physical Activity, which in this case is soccer. The lesson focuses on arousal impact on sporting performance. And as you can see in the prior knowledge of learners, this follows on from last lesson when students looked at arousal as a concept. I must note that my lesson plans have been highlighted with a yellow outline to ensure it is clear what is my work and what I am referencing. The lesson objective is for students to recognise how arousal can impact sporting performance and evaluate and justify how and why arousal impacts their soccer performances. As visible in this slide, my lesson objective directly correlates to the unit objectives. Cognitive verbs are maintained to ensure students learn how to define and use such terms. The same link is evident between the subject matter and the lesson objective. This information is present in the link to syllabus section of my lesson plan. An example of the connection between the lesson objective and the unit objectives would be unit outcome five and six, which, both, which refer to justifying and evaluating sports psychology strategies, just as it is expected for students in the lesson objective. This section of the lesson plan suggests that the syllabus was thoroughly considered while developing these lesson plans. Analyzing how arousal impact on sporting performance also satisfies the subject matter. I'll be reading the dot points from top to bottom. Identifying and exploring the impact arousal has on sporting performance. This is done through all my activities. Optimizing performance using psychology strategies to improve performance. This occurs in activity six, where students develop strategies to deal with a very intense situation. Sorry, make that activity nine and recognizing arousal as a continuum. You can see this in activity four, where students assess the inverted U model for arousal. There is a multitude of resources that are used in this lesson. They incorporate reading and analyzation. These include engagement resources, such as YouTube videos on soccer players completing penalty takes. Additionally, students also have access to A3 sheets to complete their mind map on arousal. This lesson, along with the Four other lessons will be planned specifically under the syllabus's stages of inquiry. As stated under the syllabus, teaching and learning and physical education is underpinned by three stages of inquiry. Engage and understand, apply and analyze, evaluate and justify. 
These inquiry stages are used as a pedagogical and conceptual framework to facilitate integrated learning. This lesson, just as others, follows the three stages of inquiry. To engage students and ask them to begin to understand the concept of arousal and its impact on sporting performance, it is first made clear to students the learning intention and access criteria of the lesson. This process will be repeated over the other three lesson plans. The main reason for including these to every lesson, as AI TSL states, and it ensures all students are aware of where they are going and what uh, sorry where they are going and what they are going to learn. After this, students compare soccer players completing poor and effective penalties. Students using their individual whiteboards are asked to recognise what is happening to these athletes. Once again, I am reinforcing the cognitive verbs throughout the lesson. Utilising YouTube, uh, YouTube or videos better engages learners as it is a platform they are aware of. Additionally, it requires, uh, it requires students to listen and look, which increases their literacy skills. Most importantly, this activity is far more engaging, as with the help of the individual whiteboards, students are incorporated and involved in a student-centered learning activity. Students will then engage with the inverted view model through their think-pair-share activity. After discussing arousal in specific zones previously, this will reinforce their knowledge on the different levels of arousal or zones, however you want to define it. The think pair share model also uh, is also known to enhance students' critical thinking. This was referenced by Kudura in 2013. During the apply and analyze section, students are given three activities, developing the mind map of arousal based on the inverted U model, evaluating two athletes arousal prior to the World Cup final, and lastly, evaluating their arousal for specific sporting situations based on their personality traits. As I will discuss these activities in the terms of literary strategies later, I will not go into full detail regarding the validity of each tool. The use of these activities in the apply and analyze section along with the section below, evaluate and justify, are attempted to be made relevant to students by using role models and assessing their own arousal in specific situations. In fact, this was done consistently throughout the four lessons. Sager Briggs makes this statement, uh, makes this clear in her statement, relevant learning is more effective learning and there is nothing more relevant to students than themselves. To evaluate and justify, students will evaluate how a specific situation would affect their arousal and to develop and justify strategies that will allow um, each student to reach the optimal level of arousal. Once again, this learning is relevant to the student. To assist with the task, sorry, with the last task of the lesson, the evaluate and justify um, paragraph, Students were taught explicitly how to develop a cohesive and effective paragraph. As expressed by the New South Wales Department of Education, students should be explicitly taught how to write cohesive paragraphs. It furthers this statement by saying students must be given general strategies to go about writing these cohesive paragraphs. This evidence does justify my choice for giving each student a teal sheet. The next lesson is drawn from Unit 4, Energy, Fitness, Training and Track and Field, track in this case. This lesson will aim to use ICTs to enhance learning opportunities. The lesson focuses heart rate and training zones. This lesson follows uh, the previous lesson where students were introduced to warm ups, cool downs, and the conditioning phases of training sessions. That learning in the previous lesson should benefit them in completing safe heart rest rate tests and evaluating this data. As can be seen in the subject matter, once again, this directly links to the lesson focus and also the lesson objectives. The connection between unit objectives four and five to the lesson objectives are also extremely clear as evidenced in this slide. For example, uh, number four, analyze and synthesize data to devise a training strategy. Connect to the lesson objectives, analyze primary heart rate data to develop a track specific training uh, session. The connection between a lesson focus, objective and syllabus shows effective planning of lessons under the syllabus. Once again, utilizing the same cognitive verbs ensures students practice these deliberately and consistently. To engage students, firstly, the clear learning intentions and success criteria are formed. As discussed previously, this ensures a clear goal for students and their learning throughout this lesson. To engage students, I once again utilize the think pair share so students critically evaluate taking heart rate without monitors. This then leads on to students measuring their own heart rate. Asking students to measure their own heart rate not only engages them, 
but gets them to critically assess their health and some of the human error involved in manually monitoring of heart rate. To apply and analyze, students are sourcing secondary data on track events as seen in activity five. This is to frame the primary data for the track events students will be completing with the aid of the Polar Beat application and heart rate monitor. Activities through six to eight, as seen on the slide, are very explicit and planned out to ensure that students receive the correct data and obviously reduce the time consumption, consumption sorry, that occurs with these um, activities. The evaluate and justify stage of the lesson asks students to examine the validity of secondary and primary data. Additionally, it asks them to evaluate the type of training sessions that would benefit the track activity they are doing. They are here from here to justify their choices in podcast form. The next lesson focuses on pedagogical content knowledge and is linked to the syllabus unit one, motor learning, functional anatomy, biomechanics and physical activity. The lesson focuses on fits and positives stage of motor learning. Sorry, fits and positives model of motor learning. Apologies. For this lesson, the lesson objective and accompanying learning intention and success criteria are to recognize and explain fits, pos, fits and positives model of motor learning and evaluating individual performance in terms of this model. This is directly correlated to the syllabus as visible in both the subject matter and unit ob objectives. For example, this lesson satisfies the subject matter, identify and explore the fits and positives model. Unit objective five, evaluate motor learning, biomechanics and movement strategies is satisfied by the lesson objective Evaluate performance in terms of the FITS and POSNA model. Once again, the success criteria and learning intention are directly taken from these lesson objectives. The connection between the unit objectives, subject matter and lesson focus demonstrates appropriate lesson planning based on the syllabus. To engage and understand, students analyze a video of a volleyball, volleyball player performing the strike at all three levels of the model, those levels being cognitive, associative and autonomous. Students will then be involved in developing mind maps on specific stages of skill inquiry and discussing these with the class. In the apply and analyze stage, students will take primary data on their digging and setting to help assess the stage they are in for motor learning under the FITS and POSDA model. This will be achieved as they perform. Their pair on the sideline will mark every error and perfect, perfect skill performed. Lastly, to evaluate and justify, students will evaluate the data and justify the decision for what level of motor learning they are for each skill. The choices are on this lesson will be discussed more expansively when I discuss the PCK strategies. The last lesson, sorry, back here. The last lesson focuses on higher order questioning thinking strategies and will be completed during unit three, tactical awareness, ethics and integrity. The focus of this lesson is fair play. Students have prior knowledge on, of integrity, ethics and fairness in relation to sport. So this should assist them in developing fair play um, models of sportsmen. The objective of this lesson is for students to recognize and explain the characteristics of fair play and evaluate and justify features of a fair sports person. The key cognitive verbs in the lesson objectives are directly taken from unit objectives just as every lesson. And it's clear there is a connection between the pair. For example, recognize and explain the principles of fair play satisfies unit objective one. Recognize and explain tactical awareness and ethics and integrity concepts and principles about selected physical activities. The lesson once again follows the stages of inquiry, but far more loosely than previous lessons. To engage and understand, students create their own meaning of fair play, followed by comparing their definition to the one present in the textbook. To apply and analyze, students watch a YouTube clip on some fair play and respectful sporting moments, which they must analyze. Lastly, students evaluate their own volleyball play and justify their answers, utilizing international fair play values. This lesson will be discussed more uh, thoroughly. Sorry, this lesson will be discussed more thoroughly as um, we get into the justification using scholarly sources. Um, now I will be switching to my teaching demonstration. This will go for about six minutes. I hope you enjoy. Alright class, today we're going to be looking at how arousal impacts sporting performance, okay? So last lesson we looked at arousal as a concept, but now we're going to go further in it and look at how it can affect anyone from recreational sports players to big time athletes, okay? Next slide. Alright, so the learning intention today is we want to recognise how arousal uh, can impact individual sporting performance. Recognise, identify or recall. 
particular features of information from knowledge. Okay, we've been through these cognitive verbs before. If we need any more assistance with them, uh, please let me know. Success criteria. We want to recognise and evaluate your arousal for a specific sporting situation. So I'm going to make up a situation and I want you guys to think about how your arousal would be in this um, specific situation. Alright? And now I want you to develop and justify strategies to overcome this situation. Alright? If anyone has any problem with the word evaluate or justify, please put your hand up now. No objections. Alright, let's move on. Brilliant. Uh, just as every lesson in PE, we have our lesson structure. So we want to engage and understand, and we're going to do this through how does arousal affect athletes, okay? We're going to apply and analyze. We're going to analyze your arousal for a specific sport situation. So we might look at weightlifting. We might look at more low-key sports like bowling, tennis, golf, all right? And last but not least, we're going to look at that success criteria through the evaluate and justify sections. All right, so I want everyone to grab out their individual whiteboards quickly. We're going to have a look at some videos. So I want you guys to, while these are going on, I want you to recognise what is happening to these athletes, okay? So I want you to write down what you think is happening right now to these players. Define it. All right? Are they successful? Are they unsuccessful? Do they look calm? Do they look nervous? All right, so we'll watch a few more and we'll see what answers we can come up with. Do we have, does most people in the class have an idea? We do? All right, I think we'll stop it there. Okay, so can I get everyone to show their responses, please? Sorry? Can everyone show their responses? All right? Yeah, so I'm seeing a few of you say panic. A few of you are saying, um, they're overly aroused, I can see scared. So I've written a few terms down that we can use. All right, they're panicked, they're anxious, they're scared, overwhelmed. And mostly that term gets coined as bottling it. All right, too much pressure, it explodes and you make a mistake, okay? So now we're gonna compare this to the little magician. All right. We're gonna look at how calm he is in certain situations, all right? So I want you to write down on your whiteboards quickly, once we play these, I want you to compare Messi to these other players. I want you to think, how is he coping with the situation? And then I wanna see why we think he is coping better, okay? All right, we're gonna watch this next one. All right. We'll go back to our PowerPoint slide here. Sorry guys, bear with me. All right. So I want you guys to show me your answers. Quickly, quick, quick, quick. All right, I can see a few people saying skill. Experience, all right, focus, calm, cool, collected, 
I like that one. So I came up with a few definitions. Okay? Calm, focused, has clear intentions, not phased, ruthless, in the zone. So if we someone says we're in the zone, we could be talking about that level of optimal arousal. Okay? So after this now, we're actually going to look at um, a model of arousal that is actually widely used. It's called the inverted U model. All right? So I'm going to hand these out, and then we'll start to look through that. During the lesson planning, I was given feedback from both my peers and Vincent Morn, the physical education tutor. I firstly want to know how grateful I am for receiving this feedback and to be able to develop as an educator. The first feedback I received was from Vincent Morn from Milestone 1. He stated, even though the unit and lesson focus are appropriate, your lesson planning template must contain more specific, detailed information and clearly address one of the four curriculum imperatives through the references within the planning. After viewing this feedback, I needed to readdress each lesson and a specific curriculum imperative. To achieve this, I went to lengths to complete scholarly research, which I will discuss in the coming minutes. As you can see, instead of bluntly asking students to write down the definitions, I've developed a mind map activity that engages all students in the task. Other feedback after milestone one was mostly regarding structure and erasing procedural notes, such as allow students to leave the classroom, all of which I have done. For the teaching segment, most of the feedback was around the engagement of my students. I spent most of the time discussing success criteria, learning intentions, and cognitive verbs. Additionally, instead of showing arousal's impact on sporting performance, I simply explained it. To make these changes, I have focused more on keeping my students engaged. The two videos are now directly related. One of the videos shows the pressure of getting to the athletes during penalty takes, while the other shows perfect penalty takes. Students will have to take out their individual whiteboards to write solutions to the thinking inducing questions. These questions ensure each student, each of the students are on task, engaged and framed on what they are looking to do. During milestone two, Vincent also gave me feedback as shown here. Your body activities contain very generic teaching strategies, such as read and answer. Specific teaching strategies are required for all lessons. To address this issue, as I explained previously, I've researched scholarly articles to incorporate specific teaching strategies. For example, to LEP1, I've addressed, sorry, I've added strategies such as think, pair, share and having students develop mind maps in collaborative groups. A lot of the body activities I've developed focus around collaborative work and self-exploration, such as having students assess models and gather data on their own. Utilising said feedback has hopefully allowed me to develop four well-rounded lessons that are not only engaging, but meet the curriculum imperatives I'm striving to meet. Developing proficiency and literacy should be a prime concern for all educational authorities, as competency and such capabilities has been established to active citizenship and lifelong academic success. This is reinforced under the physical education syllabus. Ongoing systematic teaching and learning focused on the literacy, knowledge and skills specific to physical education is essential for student achievement. This was pulled from the syllabus. Considering this information, just as specified on the syllabus, I offered the opportunity for students to comprehend texts. This includes comprehending and critiquing the YouTube videos, the inverted U model of arousal, and two athletes' accounts of their arousal during the World Cup final, and composing texts, developing a mind map on the arousal model, evaluating their arousal during a sporting situation, and justifying personal strategies that will impact arousal. The use of multiple literacy activities was advocated by Wolf. He stated parallel development of multiple literacies can help students ask and think about deeper questions and new never before articulated thoughts. He went on to state rather than competing, multiple literacies complement and reinforce each other. During comprehension activities as present on this side, students are involved in content literacy. Content literacy can be defined as the ability to use reading and writing to acquire content. Buell and Whitaker state that content literacy has the potential to maximize learning and enhances lectures and demonstrations. While watching the YouTube videos on Great and Paul's soccer penalty, students comprehend to acquire knowledge regarding arousal's impact on sporting performance. The same can be stated regarding the articles on Pilo and Buffon's accounts prior to the World Cup final. Buell and Whitaker have stated that website articles can be used to teach content and support students of readers as readers and writers. In this lesson, I also provide the opportunity for visual literacy through comprehending the inverted U model and composing a mind map on such a model. Visual uh, media can be consumed so easily and we are very visually orientated people. So this is more successful. 
Research gives a wide range of benefits which supports its inclusion to this lesson, such as visual information is more memorable, information presented visually is processed faster by the brain, helps students communicate more effectively, enriches understanding, supports non-English speeches, and increases enjoyment. Prior to the last activity, students were given the opportunity to rehearse cohesive writing. This explanation was only strengthened by utilising a visual support tool. The last portion of the lesson involves composing text. This piece asks students to evaluate their arousal in a sporting situation based off their personal factors. Additionally, this task asks students to develop and justify the effectiveness of psychology strategies to enhance or reduce their arousal during this situation. Reflective, piece, sorry, reflective pieces allow students to practice their writing skills in a more open-ended format. Zemelin, Daniels and Hyde agree that powerful things occur when students are asked to self monitor and reflect. As we move into the 21st century, educators must consider introducing technology into our classrooms. Hayes 2007 states that ICT is a means for creating a powerful learning environment. Incorporating ICT into PE, uh, PE develops students' understanding of the human body and the science beneath it. Incorporating ICT is directly specified under the syllabus. The lesson plan developed succeeds in achieving one of the specified requirements, as seen here capturing performance data using digital technologies. To achieve this in my lesson plan, I introduced heart rate monitors and a bowl of polar beat application. The choice of heart rate monitors will give students direct feedback to find primary data. This includes finding the maximum heart rate during spe specific track events and the training zones these have completed in. Additionally, utilizing heart rate monitors will ensure one, reliable data, and two, the lesson will be far more efficient. Research conducted by Tipton and Sanders shows that heart rate monitors enhance instruction, increase comprehension about healthy concepts, and give students the skills to become more healthy individuals. At the end of the lesson, instead of asking students to write down their choices, I wanted groups to collaboratively work on creating a podcast through the voice memo application. Colin Gray from 2017 argues that students creating podcasts allow students to take control of an aspect of their education and therefore encourages engagement in the material. They can question, they can contribute, and they can teach each other. Additionally, the greatest ped pedagogical characteristic offered by podcasting is learning through listening and speaking. Jenny Bolch reinforced this in the statement. They learn concrete skills like research, framing an introduction, and closing a paragraph, sequencing, transition words, and how to be a good presenter. Recently, attention has been focused on the development nature of pedagogical content knowledge in the general and physical education literature. Pedagogical content knowledge is the teacher's ability to pedagogically adapt content to students, diverse, uh, to students of diverse abilities. Unfortunately, to develop pedagogical content knowledge, educators need time to practice teaching that lesson focus and objective. To develop this lesson, I had to refer to scholarly articles and references, as explained previously, as explained previously, I have no experience with such topic. Teaching of motor learning efficiently can be challenging due to the abstractness of motor learning theories, which are usually based on laboratory experiments. Additionally, there can be a lack of motivation in students due to a disconnect between theory and practice. As expressed by Wang, after teaching theory, applying these models to practice would be successful. This is evident in my lesson as I have students participate in games where they can actually assess their skill level. And this is this analyzation is done through primary data. Simplifying complex concepts is also achieved by designing graphical illustrations, such as the mind map created by students at the start of the lesson. An example of graphic illustrations is given in the PowerPoint slide, as you can see here. As described under the literacy lesson, visual media has many benefits. These are also given on this PowerPoint slide. The last lesson to discuss is higher order thinking questioning strategies. Fair play is a complex concept that requires higher order thinking and questioning. Modern sport is rife with cheating, doping and disrespect. The lack of sporting role models can be confusing to our young active students. Judith Nappy states, for questioning to be effective, teachers need to plan structured higher order interactions. High level questioning requires students to further examine the concepts under study using application, analysis, evaluation and synthesis. When designing these higher order questioning strategies, I assessed and researched Bloom's taxonomy. Bloom's taxonomy provides a stable framework for teachers to use to focus on higher order thinking. Questions that are effective promote inquiry, student self-assessment and, cre 
creativity, even as they stimulate critical thinking. The examples of these higher order questions include activity three. Within this task, students are required to distinguish key features of fair play through the format of visual media and separate and outline key fair play characteristics. This is defined as analyzing under Bloom's taxonomy. Analyzing represents the breakdown of communication into its constituents elements of parts such that the relative hierarchy of ideas is made clear and all relations between ideas expressed are made explicit. The learning outcomes of analysis are fair, far greater than those of comprehension and application as students are required to understand both content and the structural form of the material. During activity four, students have the opportunity to create under Bloom's taxonomy. Under Bloom's taxonomy, this is considered the one of the peaks of abstract thinking. This question can be considered creating or synthesizing as students utilize their knowledge on fair play to form an, an entirely new fair athlete. During activity five, students are asked to assess themselves and whether they are fair sports persons. This is defined under Bloom's taxonomy as evaluation. Evaluation involves the ability to judge the value of material for a given purpose. In this case, is judging yourself and assessing whether you're a fair athlete. These judgments are based on definite criteria that could be internal criteria, organizational, or external criteria, purpose and relevance. In this case, criteria is formed throughout the lesson. Students are and should evaluate whether they're a fair athlete based on the fair characteristics they value, their idea of fair athlete, and their self-concept and attitudes. Learning outcomes in this area are highest in cognitive hierarchy because they contain elements of all all those other characteristics and categories, plus value judgments based off clearly defined criteria. As we've seen, I've specifically staged these questions so students progress from analyzing to synthesizing to evaluating. This ensures at the end, students have the skills to evaluate themselves. The four lesson plans I've created in the last 12 weeks were developed with reference to senior physical education syllabus and scholarly sources. These sources assisted to develop lesson plans that are engaging, effective, and follow the four curriculum imperatives. These sources assisted to create lesson plans that are, sorry, I've already stated that. These four curriculum imperatives were addressed over four units under the syllabus. There were direct measures made to ensure there was a clear connection between the lesson focus to subject matter, lesson objectives, and unit objectives. Additionally, literacy, ICT, PCK and HOTQ strategies were researched to ensure the highest quality of lessons. Please reference these lesson plans to further the information presented over the last 30 minutes. I thank you for your attention and I will now present all the references I used throughout the justification and additionally the resources used during my lesson plans. If you want to look at those a bit closely, I recommend you pause. Thank you.